Hello. Welcome to Binary Jazz, a podcast. I I fear that Allison is frozen again. Yeah, it does appear that way. Okay, well, here we're here. Allison is here. Um, In and out. Chris, Allison, Gary, uh, Ben Jazz. You saw us last week streaming live on the For YouTube. For sure, live. Uh, and if you didn't, well, there are recordings available on our website, which is binaryjazz.us. And it is a great um, gateway to the binary jazz universe. Yeah, the show is nothing like that, though. What? It's just, not a universe? No, I mean it's it's a universe, but it is the show. The show is nothing like the con. If you went into the, if you watch the the live stream or watch the t- <sighs> watch the individual talks or the recap or whatever, uh, and then you come into the show expecting it to be like on topic and about like specific things, you would be probably sorely disappointed. Well, you weren't paying attention to my talk then because my talk was not on the topic, and I set the topic for my talk. <laughs> Your talk had a topic. It did. It, it, it which straight meandered into around. It, it, it nuclear eventually warheads. got back to it. Yeah. No, here's it pictures was, of space people. Here's nuclear on, warhead. It was, on, it was on topic. And here's six slides that match the title because I felt like they had to exist. I mean, that's <laughs> literally what it was. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not mad. It just, <laughs> just where things went. Perhaps I uh, convinced myself it was a good topic and then got into research and was like, what the fuck? And that's, you know, <laughs> that's also... That's, that should be like the story of, uh, that should be the title of my biography. Like Gary was researching something and then what the fuck? It's a little lengthy. I got to find something shorter than yeah. that. Yeah. Maybe it just shortens it to, to Gary was researching Gary, something. What the fuck? Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> Gary was researching something is the title of the book and it just meanders through various like things and then like circles back on itself a few times and just like this weird spiral. Is that called Wikipedia golf when someone like tries to find the shortest route between two topics related on Wikipedia? Is that what that's called? Or it's Wikipedia. I saw it mentioned somewhere and thought I would love to participate in that with a person. Like Mm. it would be fun. Um, So. uh, Well, I don't, I don't know that we, I mean, we, we don't have an Allison, we don't have a topic, but nope. uh, and I we do have some suggest... Allison questions and I want to, I want to wait until, until Allison is like on okay. to, to do the Allison questions. Um, I was going to suggest perhaps we should use a different technology that's less prone to the, her internet disruptions, like the Google meet. Although I mean, we need to Google. I don't care. That. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, I don't know that Google Meet would be necessarily better. Yeah, it's my fallback at work when Zoom is bad. I jump over to Meet and it works. But anyway, yeah, I think, questions. I think it's. I think it's. All right. Well, I, I mean, do we want to do the questions, or do you want to do? Do you have an actual topic, or do you want to do the uh, the game that I wanted to bring? I, I don't know if it's a game. It kind of is. It's more commentary, I think. Um, I was. I'm up for anything as long as my internet lasts. Yeah, I was. I was. I didn't want to get super deep into your questions if you if you popped off again. But we'll we'll, we'll hope well, to hear. It but is then recorded. I get to listen to the episode. So I was going to say it's true. recorded. So like That's if true. you ask the questions, like. That's true because she knows the questions are. They're probably more um, conducive to a bad internet connection. That's true. That's fair. Um, okay, so we'll go from. I mean, they're all submitted within like five minutes of each other, so I can't really go with the oldest first. But I'll go with the oldest first. Um, what's more important to you? What's more impressive to you? What's more impressive to you? Running a fast mile Uh or a slow marathon? A slow marathon. As someone who's completed a slow marathon, (laughs) I, I, uh, I can easily say a slow marathon. It was just, fucking brutal like a fast mile like yeah there's like there's something crazy there where it happens and uh you know there are people that are very fast um but like a marathon is a thing that like you know you have to train for like yeah i think if you were being chased by a cheetah you could run a mile and it might be extremely fast and your body could find a way to keep you going but a marathon like if you're being chased by a cheetah well i guess i guess that's kind of the of humans that humans can have that endurance running i don't know maybe this is a bad example i just feel i having run both fast and slow for very long distances 
I don't want to do either, but I find the marathon more impressive. I w- I would I would probably agree. I think that it's it's a fast mile is is certainly impressive, but it's only impressive for like you know four or five minutes or however long the fast mile is. Here's the thing. Um, the like the a marathon. marathon. Marathons like suffering. I mean, that's, that's part of it. And I don't yes. want to like glamorize that and, and say that like, you know, to, to achieve greatness, blah, 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 you have to suffer or whatever. Right. I can't believe that at all. Um, but I, I think what I do believe is that if someone has uh, the motivation to push through that suffering, there's probably something behind that and whatever is driving that uh, is, is uh, important enough for them to accommodate the suffering. And that is admirable. So that's a silly uh, answer. Yeah, dog. I want to go hug that dog. Actually, I don't think I should do that. So I like, ran up behind it. And, like, hey, talk. I'd be like, what the hell, man? <laughs> All right. Uh, that is the first question. And Allison has disappeared again. I apologize <laughs> for Allison's uh, internet. I don't know if there's storms up there or what's going on. Um, I, I was going to ask what the weather situation was. Weather sitch was up there. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's like super bad. I mean, we had we had snow the other night, but we usually get because the you know from from the west coast, like storm fronts usually hit the west coast first and then drift in drift east, and then we usually get stuff like so stuff will hit the Bay Area, uh, you know, two days or so before it hits us. So like, yeah, we were usually the the later. So I don't know. I don't know what's coming. Maybe there's something coming. Uh, all right. Question number two. Yep. Is uh, I never set a timer. Oh, well, I'll just kick us off. Uh, question number two is when you were when you are older. Mm. What do you when you are older? I'm doing this thing. I listen to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I've mentioned it before. I, I've been listening to my brother, my brother and me, and okay. they have. They have uh, so so it 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 pretends to be a an advice show uh, where people submit questions. And for a long time, they were using Yahoo Answers um, to to like get questions from from the internet. Uh, mm-hmm. But Yahoo Answers doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Um, so they have a thing. Uh, so they use, they use other things instead, but they have a thing where, and I guess they had a whole bunch of questions that were submitted uh, from Yahoo Answers, or maybe they're all made up now. I don't know, but they have a thing at the end of the show that they call the final Yahoo, which is the final thing. And, and they just ask the question, but they don't answer it. Um, and so uh, one of the brothers, uh, Griffin, does this thing when he's delivering the final Yahoo, where he starts, he starts to ask asking the question and then he just just doesn't finish the question and he sort of just lets it build up a whole bunch for like dramatic tension and then he'll like go back and change it and then he'll ask it again. and so like it's just this, this this like stop and start stutter and it like i wasn't even paying attention that it was a shtick uh for a long time until their show that they published on Monday uh, was a live show. And it was very obviously played up to be more uh, like more, more dramatic pauses and stuff for, you know, the audience. And that was when I sort of, they sort of clicked like, Oh, like, like that's, it's for the lulls. That's why he's, do- he's reading it this way. <laughs> not, not because he's like, not because it's made up or he's making it up or he's changing it or whatever. He's just doing it because like he's trolling. So that's cool. Um, when you're older. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm pulling on yeah. my, <laughs> when you're, when, when you are older, mm-hmm. when you're older, what what do you think children when you're older what do you think children etc will ask you what do you think children etc will ask you to tell stories about 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Could you just give me the whole thing in like one breath? Because I don't know what the hell you're asking at this point. <laughs> when you're older. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I wish Allison were here for this. <laughs> Honestly. <sighs> when I'm older, what do I help children? Help, hope children what, do you, what, what do you think? What do I think children, etc.? What do you think children, etc.? Will, et will ask you to tell stories about. Well, <laughs> um, I think that they will ask me to tell stories about like the land before internet time before internet um i think that they will ask me to tell stories about you I do remember... you think they'll ask you about the time before internet yeah. how did you even do things when there wasn't internet how did you how did you get food when there wasn't such a thing as doordash you think that's gonna be a question yeah i think so and the reason that's gonna be a question is that i had my questions for my grandparents uh were always like very practical, like, hey, how do I blah, 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 blah. But there was a time where I asked like questions that I needed them to tell stories about. And that was when I was doing um, research on World War II. So mm -hmm. I would call them and say, hey, can you tell me about dot, dot, dot. And um, that was a, uh, um, so I expect that in history, you know, they'll be like, can you tell me about um, the September 11th attacks, mm -hmm. the war on terror? Well, the war on terror, I mean, lasts for 20 years. Like there's, yeah. what is there to say? Um, but you know, like, I mean, I can, I can talk extensively about, you know, some of the space shuttle, like the space shuttle era, like I was alive for, and that is, that it's, you were too, that's, but that's like such an antiquated thing now, the fact that, you know, the, we had, uh, um, human missions in this like pseudo reusable vehicle, right. And, uh, and it was a government vehicle and, you know, my children are growing up in a time where like government vehicles are, they still exist for space flight, but aren't going to be the norm. And the flip is like, we're, we're doing, you know, an order of magnitude more launches these days than we were even at the height of the shuttle program. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I mean, it's going to get to the point where it's, you know, hundreds of people a year are going to be going to space and it's boring. And you're going to be like, yeah, let me tell you about the shuttle program. Um, and, and then I also think that there will be questions um, undoubtedly about like just what the fuck was going on with the u.s like right now mm -hmm. uh, and i hope they ask it i I, ex I, ex <laughs> I expect that as well we uh, we were watching um we were watching home alone with the kids uh and it's the first time i've seen home alone and i don't know how long it's the first time the kids have seen it ever but you know like home alone is one of those cultural touchstones right and we yeah. we feel like like Erin didn't have a lot of like pop culture when she was growing up. Like her parents didn't go to movies. They didn't have a lot of money. So they didn't watch, they didn't have a TV for a long time. So like she missed out on a lot of the sort of, a lot of those sort of pop culture touchstones that's, which made her feel um, uh, outsidery uh, amongst her peers because she just didn't have those references. So she is pretty, feels pretty strongly about, making sure that our kids have some of those references um and so we're, we started watching home alone and the funny thing is like like as soon as it started as soon as like the storm hits and and he like wishes for his parents not to not to be there or whatever uh and and the storm hits and and my daughter lila is like oh I've seen a, a YouTube video that was based on this and like yeah because this story is everywhere because it's a it's a cultural yeah. thing yeah. Um, but it 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 struck me as I'm watching this movie, so many things. I mean, like one thing is like looking at the cars is hilarious because like <laughs> like there's the junker car that's obviously a junker car, but which I don't even know. Like I can't. I can almost not even empathize with with having an old junker car anymore like who mm. has who has a junker car any like what does a junker car even look like anymore i don't know like in the in when i was in high school it was like a pinto but like mm -hmm. what is even a junker anymore i like do people have those like it's a pt cruiser Kristen. you watch the video oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes but no uh, to answer your question I, I, I you make a really valid point like 
Like there are several scenes in that movie. And I think even backing up from that, the, the premise of the movie existing, that the, the car other, went out and says no alarm clock, like my alarm clock has a battery backup. Right, right. Well, you know, and, like and, it's, and the other thing is like, there's there's all of this stuff about, there's whole, there's this dramatic tension around not being able to phone him. And there's this whole scene where she steals the phone from the French uh, person and she tries to call the, 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 yeah. the police station, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. like, they, and then she's back and forth and on hold and whatever. They never call him and no one has cell phones. And the whole thing would be very, it's, 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 the, if the story doesn't work with cell phones. It just doesn't work because like with a cell phone, he has a cell phone. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's what eight years old. Obviously, he has a cell phone, <laughs> or My someone in the house phones, has a yeah. cell phone, or, or like yeah. you know, an, an yeah. iPod or something that can FaceTime. And everybody there would have a cell phone, so there wouldn't be this question about, oh, when we get to my brother's house, we can call the neighbors or whatever. Like yeah. it would be everybody has a cell phone. We definitely have a way of getting in touch with him. Like right now, we like FaceTime the hell out of the the family computer and wait for him to like hear the ringing and then like there it is you know like none none of it works the whole movie fails and falls down with modern technology i even think even more simply than that is like if you're a parent you have your kid on a smart device and the first thing you do is you try where are they located yeah know? right Find my device right. yeah they wouldn't oh, even it's, leave. it's at home right. yeah right um yeah geez you're uh, yeah that's very true um you know, and that's going to be one of the problems I feel like with movies is that that there's like this. I, I sort of remember it early on. It's um, a cliff. There's like a there's a huge cliff. Like and there it's pre smartphone. There's like yeah. this little window where yeah. people had cell phones for six or eight years, and then the smartphone hit, like the iPhone hit, and that little six to eight window, six to eight year window. If you catch one of those movies that has like a phone pre uh, smartphone, feels like it was made in like you know the dark ages it's it's just wild you know that you wouldn't have all this technology and then you have then you have like the shoulder the shoulder years where um where it's in between it's like it's post smartphone but free iphone so it's like the blackberry years oh yeah yeah that's so like, true. So like we were watching, we were watching the holiday. Aaron and I were watching the holiday last night, and everybody has a BlackBerry because that was that was what you had. And like it's it's so quaint to have everybody like looking at their BlackBerry and like scrolling on their BlackBerry and typing on this ridiculously large keyboard and like that's it's like you know monochrome uh monochrome interface. Yeah, I think I think the what did you do before technology is definitely a thing. Um particularly because like yeah it's there's such a big drop off um especially when you're looking at media and like it 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 dates it so hard like mm-hmm. it's like it's like watching it's like watching you know black and white it's movies a wonderful and, life or something yeah yeah and and they like you know or, or yeah black and white movies where they don't have even like a rotary telephone where you have to like call the operator you know like what is that even like I don't even like. How does that even I, work? Right, I never experienced that. Did you own a rotary phone as a kid? Did you ever have a rotary yeah, phone? Yeah, we had a rotary phone. Yeah, yeah, we did too. We did too. Which we had a rotary phone in the living room because there was a table between these two. Yeah, because you had couches. to have a, you had to have a, a piece of furniture for the rotary phone, of course, to sit on. <laughs> yeah, because well, I mean, because it was yeah, I mean, it was bigger than your laptop. It was you know, <laughs> footprint wise. And then in the kitchen, we had the one on the wall. Um, yep. And that was before like cordless phones were affordable because mm-hmm. that one had a cable that could go from one end of the kitchen or oh, yeah. near the refrigerator all the way to the table so my mom could come across and right at the table and so as a kid i remember running through there and tripping on that damn cable mm-hmm. and then her turning and yelling at us for running through the house obviously because we're not supposed to be doing that um but i mean i think about that and geez you're right i mean that 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 piece of furniture that piece of technology was iconic i i remember when my grandmother died i was in fifth grade and my dad getting that phone call at dinner, he got a chance to the phone and he answered it. And it was his dad calling to tell him that his mom had died. And for me, that's like the vivid memory of that event is that that's how we got that news, you know? And then I think about how. I have, I have a vivid uh, telephone memory as well. Um, so when I was growing up uh, and my dad was working a lot, 
Uh, and so my parents were, my grandparents uh, were basically my guardians. Um, not officially, but like that, they were, that's where I was, they were they taking took that role. Yeah. Yeah. They took on that. They took ownership of that, of that responsibility um, because he was working. Um, and there is discussion. I didn't know it at the time, but I learned it later. There is discussion about them making their guardianship like a legal thing like actually getting becoming legal guardians um and um my dad was i think really threatened by this and so i remember this argument and i i'm i associate it with that because um because of sort of the outcome um but because it was around the same time i think if i'm piecing like the the bits and pieces of information that i have together correctly um so there is there is an art. He, I was I was at my dad's apartment uh, this time, and he was talking on the phone with them, and it was a loud argument about you know me essentially and taking care of me. And he, I remember him slamming the phone into the cradle uh, and breaking the phone, and like, and that was that was like so that's that's my iconic telephone moment. And it was a rotary, you know, but like you know like that's not even a thing you can do dramatically really any, you know, like dramatically like click the, the, I mean, unless you want to throw your phone into the wall or something, which, you know, I'm sure people have and do, 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 which then you're sorry because it's a $1,000 piece of technology you've just destroyed. Um, uh, Yeah. That there's not, again, again, there's not a corollary for that. And the old rotary phone, if you hung it, if you slammed it down in the cradle hard enough, the bell inside, you would make yep, a ring. Yep, bing. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, there yep. was that. Yep. I actually remember remember that in movies and remember experiencing that on occasion at the house. At the yep. end of a angry phone call. Yeah. Hmm. It's, it's, it's so wild, these cultural cues that existed and were completely transient, you know? Mm-hmm. Like they were there, they were gone. They were there for less than 100 yeah, years. Yeah, in in in. in as compared with the technology that we have now, I mean, the technology that we have now is pretty, still pretty young too, but like, Oh yeah. If you look at like the course of history um, and like when these technologies emerged, like from, you know, the, the telephone system emerging as a thing to people getting phones in their homes to like the existence of a rotary phone over like an operator system to rotary phones, then becoming, you know, touch tone phones to then like, cell phones to then like smartphones like it the it it's not a, a, a huge chunk of time for each of these like things like it's it's a it's they're fairly small gaps so like which is the reason why like that that sort of drop off in pop culture in like all these movies and stuff is so sharp because like it it hasn't been that long well here's here's the one that can applying that logic here's the one that just just baffles me uh 1969, right? Famously, it's when humans stepped foot on the moon. Uh, 1903 was when the Wright brothers flew the first airplane. 66 mm. years between that. So you you could have been a young person that read your newspaper about like human flight down in Kitty Hawk uh, by two dudes that made bicycles from Ohio that found a good spot with winds and then been alive when humans stepped foot on the moon. That, that entire mm-hmm. process of humans not flying to flying with engine powered stuff to launching a rocket a quarter million miles away with enough accuracy to actually put humans there and then return them home safely happened in, in 66 years. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's, it's hard to look at like where we are now and appreciate like just how quickly um, humans together can enact like significant improvements in technology. Well, I mean, uh, how many, how many, uh, how many computers, how many versions of my first computer exist yeah. inside this device right here? I'm holding up my no. iPhone. Like many, like there's at least three. <laughs> well, <laughs> if we say probably many, many more actually. So Unix epoch time, right? Is January 1st, 1979. Mm-hmm. Um, if we say that that's like officially the start of the computer age, I mean, we're like, we're, we're, we're still 20 years out from that 60, 25 years out, 20 years out from that 65 year point. If you mm-hmm. say like there's something that happens in that mm-hmm. time where you're yep, like, yep, yep. people start looking back and w- what is that going to be? 
you know, 20 yeah. years from now, what's, what is computing going to look like? And I mean, you and I are both uh, not so naive to make any kind of bold declaration. Cause I think that, you know, well, I'll, I'll even, I'll even back it up a little bit. I was, I was super obsessed with wearable technology when I was in college, hmm. um, not, not like for the geek factor, but, but I, 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 I really thought there was um, applicable societal benefits um, for things like um, if uh, for hearing impaired, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. there were a lot of deaf students at, at the school I went to. It would be really nice to have context sometimes or to see a pronunciation for a word if you're lip reading mm-hmm. um, or perhaps even to, I, I mean, I couldn't imagine augmented reality at that point that you could like look at someone's mouth and a computer could help you understand. But mm-hmm. if you're lip reading, if you had a way to input to a computer, what, you think they said, and it could give you a list of potential words mm-hmm. with the context of the conversation. You could, you could be more uh, engaged in the conversation and not having to stop and ask for spellings and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, I thought about that for people that, um, uh, you know, we're learning like a, a second language was a second language. Like it would be so great to have like a ubiquitous display. Uh, in this case, like to have it in your glasses was, would be like impossible, but you know, the old technology of the, um, uh, VHS recorders that sat on your shoulder. There were schematics online that people had taken those and turned it into a heads-up display. Mm-hmm. So uh, Raspberry Pi, of course, wasn't a thing. So like a little board that could do that was, I mean, effectively like you could find a board that was like a an old ATX size board, 386 mm-hmm. CPU, maybe like a cord, like a mm-hmm. bigger than a tape deck, but a tape deck basically. And you got to power it and battery technology wasn't the same. So you needed a lead acid battery, you know, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, you, you're putting a pound on there. And so it was like, you needed a fanny pack to lug the stuff around. You needed a way to do these wires. The headset was, I never could get anything more than just like video output. I never could figure out the mechanics to mount it, but I had this board and this eyepiece that when plugged in uh, could boot up and tell me that shit didn't work. And I had never had any <laughs> interface with it. And that was as far as I got with it. But I mean, that was to me, like it just, the, the promise of that technology was, was, was astounding. Uh, and now here we are. And it's like, I have on my wrist something I can speak to and ask for translations. I can ask for historical data. I can ask for the weather. I can set multiple timers. I, I mean, it's like, we're, we're not there on that wearable side, but we're, you know, it's not, these dominoes are falling and they're falling quickly. And these pieces are going to pop into place where it makes sense to just have this. Uh, and, and it's, there's no question, you know? Yeah. Um, and yet I still run into people today singing in the nursing home. I use an iPad for my guitar tabs and there was a woman who'd never seen an iPad before. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it's like once you, once you use the technology, you just become immune to how how amazing it is. Mm -hmm. So I have this iPad and I have a Bluetooth pedal so I can turn pages Mm -hmm. while I'm playing guitar. Nice. I'm turning the pages by stepping on the pedal and it's, you know, it, it, it's magic at some Mm -hmm. level. It feels like magic unless you're like, Oh yeah, of course it works Mm -hmm. because you get this like spoon fed the advancements little by little. And then, somehow you've eaten the entire elephant, you know? I don't know. Having, having built so many computers as a, yeah. as a young adult, as a, you know, teenage, late teens and early twenties, human being, uh, nerd, um, just the processing power of, of devices today just still continues to astound me. I mean, like the actual like processor speed hasn't, gone hasn't hasn't accelerated that much but just the computing power in general mm-hmm. and and when you compare it to the machines that w- that we were building like the gaming rigs that we were building in like the 90s and early st- early 2000s and then you compare it with like you know the rig that my son built over the summer like it's it's ridiculous the a1202 1204 error that apollo uh, 11 experienced when going in for the moon landing was literally that the computer was like i have to drop some calculations to keep the real time data working. Mm. Like, and that's what that error was showing was like, I'm ha- you're having me process too many instructions. Like, 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 can you even imagine like a system that that's, that would inform you of that? Like, no, it just slows down now and you just process all of them. And you, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's, oh, we've come so far. And all right. Yeah. Last, that was a great question, apparently. Yeah. Apparently. Last, uh, last Allison question. Mm. Maybe, maybe she'll come back. I don't know. I'm, I think that I think that's gonna say, should we check Slack? And I, I've been I've been poking my head, and she hasn't said the goose in a while, so. got loose in the network closet. Yeah, apparently. I think I think so. I think yeah. the goose maybe killed all the internet on Vancouver Island. 
Um, okay. What else knows? Gary, Allison would like to know. What? I'm going to have internet problems before this, this question's over. <laughs> what would you want? Allison wants to, Allison is inquiring what we would want buried, what we would want buried <laughs> with us. Yeah. She would like to know what we would want buried with us so that we could use it. She wants to know what we would want buried with us so we can use it in the afterlife. Is that the entire question? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Boy. I feel, feel free to go ahead if you've got an answer on this one. I have not. I have not considered what I would want to take with me in the, into the afterlife. Yeah. I mean, my answer, like, you know, other people, but that's a little fucked up. <laughs> Friends and family. <laughs> come, on, come on down. Sorry. <laughs> you all got to go in with him. That's you fair, did. though. You yeah. soon will be, too. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know because because the root of the question is like what do you think about the afterlife and I right yeah I feel like and I the the answer to that question what do you think about the afterlife is is I don't yeah and mine is like I, I mean our energy goes somewhere is my yeah. answer mm-hmm. and I don't think it necessarily all goes to the same place so like what so the, what if I could take anything in the afterlife it would be memories yeah I would want my energy to carry along with my memories yeah I think so. Can I be buried with my when, memories? When I when I think about this question, it 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 just reminds me of of you know the Egyptian perception yeah. of, of death and the afterlife because that was I mean that's 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 where a lot of our I mean they're not the only ones that buried people with stuff uh, to take with them uh, into right. the afterlife, but that is uh, I mean a lot of the stuff that we are taught in schools um, like when that subject is broached. Often it's the the finger points at oh Egypt Egyptians did that lots of other people did it but yeah sure Egyptians did it too um, but that's where I think so I'm thinking like okay so in the Egyptian afterlife uh, you are brought across the Sea of Sticks on a boat and then you're brought to ju- to be judged uh, by um, uh, I guess it's pro- yeah it's Osiris. Because he's the god of the underworld after he was killed by his brother Thoth. Um, so and and so I would want, I guess I would want to to be buried with anything that would make that judgment process go better for me. Like I'm not not exactly yeah. like bribes, but like 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 something that would. Because he's, I mean, and I don't, I don't even think so. Like the idea is that you're weighed against your actions. Um, and I don't think that it's so bad that like, you know, like I think that normal, it's, I don't think it's like the good place where like um, the system is rigged from the get go. And like, basically no one goes to the actual good place because of all of these cascading sins that are like, like tiny microtransactions that that come out of like oh you bought almond milk so so that's 10 points against you because of like how mm-hmm. that impacts the environment and you have this little in- influence on like the destruction of of the environment whatever like i don't i don't i wouldn't i no afterlife that i would believe in would work that way so i think that it's like if you're a normal person then you would go to like the normal place yeah um and so i would think that like that what I would want to bring with me would be anything that would like sort of reinforce the normality and possible, like, I guess, good intent um, that uh, that would help that argument 
and not send me to like the bad place by mistake or the bad place intentionally because like actually like those microtransactions are you know added up and i think that like if i apply that to like other ideas of of you know bringing things into the afterlife to help you i like i think it still kind of works the same because like at some point like most most unless it's like unless it's like your idea of the afterlife is like you're still around like wandering around and watching over people like guardian angels or whatever um mm. mostly like there's a there's this point of judgment uh where your deeds are judged and i and um and that determines where you go what your afterlife is like unless it's like you know like in, in buddhism it's like you know you sort of like become one with everything or reincarnate or or, or whatever and, and yeah. that's and then like and there's this idea i think in 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 eastern uh philosophies where like what you are reincarnated as or what yeah the form of the reincarnation that you take um is is based on what you did in life so there's still a, there's still that element of judging um that determines like where you end up the next time around um so again there's still like whatever whatever i would want to take with me is something that would help that argument a defense attorney perhaps <laughs> yeah i that seems completely logical completely logical um, sort of gaming the system have you been watching The Good Place recently? Um, yeah, we were watching it with the kids. So we watched through uh, season one. Yeah, we were that, watching it. That scene, um, I don't know, what's his name? Um, uh, where Michael? he realizes that the, what's that? Michael? Yeah, realizes that the, um, uh, the system is, is rigged. That like buying a tomato, like that, that simple act of buying a tomato and he shares that and I, my, I love that scene because it speaks uh, so strongly to like this thing I've been feeling for many, many, many years. And it, it just makes sense that, uh, and it's so, so tersely worded, you know, it's like, yeah, like you can't actually, uh, you can't be an ethical uh, consumer in, in, in the capitalism that we have right now. Like you can make better choices, but you can't make good choices. Yeah. You know, uh, and that, I love that. Um, and, uh, and sometimes, you know, the convenience of buying at a local grocery store, fruits and vegetables, whatever they have available and not considering what's in season, as opposed to going to the farmer's market on a Saturday mm -hmm. morning and supporting local, um, you know, it's awful hard to not, to not be like, shit, I just need two tomatoes for this recipe and I'm going to get them. And, you know, it doesn't matter that like, there's not a lot available locally right now because mm -hmm. it's not the season. Um, yeah, it's like, uh, that, that is, a that's a fun, a fun brain puzzle. That's one that I play with at night a lot when I'm not. Sleeping. Yeah, that's and that's the reason why we wanted to. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to, to show the kids uh, that show because it, um, it's yeah, it's like it's yeah it's like it's like ethical philosophy for dummies. It's like it's so neatly packaged, mm -hmm. um, and easily consumable, um, you know, philosophical debates like it is it is the equivalent of of the greek philosophers debating in the streets like that is that is our version of like plato like having dissertations to to and like having discussions and legit like i want to just hug chidi you know <laughs> like like there's so many episodes where i'm just like oh god man i've been there like his frustration at trying to determine like good and bad like that that concept like Oh, I, I so strongly relate to that. And I'm just like, like you, if you, if you, if you keep looking at it, you can, um, you can just cause yourself to freeze and make no decision. Um, and like, maybe, you know, that's, that ends up being like a whole nother facet ultimately, mm -hmm. but it, it, yeah, I just, I want to hug that idea that he has and be like, it's all right. It's, it's, it's okay to, to be that sometimes. Yep. Yeah. Um, anyway uh they they uh they really besmirched the city of jacksonville on that show um, <laughs> and jacksonville uh loved it absolutely ate it up and were it still on the air this would have been another just stellar season to just 
latch on to all the storylines out of Jacksonville um, who, uh, uh, who fired their football head coach uh, two days ago after a story broke that he had kicked a kicker during warmups. Uh, I, I mean, it was, I, he should have been fired a long time ago, but I think finally that was the story that between that and some documentation that allows him to do it for cause and not pay out the contract. I'm like, I'm guessing, I don't know. It's just, it's just like, you look at it and you're like, how, how can this really bad football team actually get worse? And like, there's so much worse. It's, 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 it's like, it's, it's silly. It's entertaining this year. Not because there's any sporting happening, like sport, sporting happening, sports happening. Like, I mean, they play football games technically. Mm-hmm. They've won two somehow, but they, I mean, they're literally just like a joke. It's just, so. Yeah. And, and I, it would be interesting to, to see what the good place in general did with with covid particularly in florida because you know you know that there would be something right like with with the way that florida just as a state dealt with or didn't deal with uh the pandemic and masking and like everything both because it is a huge tourist destination and they wanted to not hurt the tourism industry and because it's still the south um with everything that goes around with that philosophically um Mm -hmm. like yeah there's just this there's just a lot of stuff there where like like i'll even jump on the tourism portion is it's uh it's beyond being open for tourism it's the capitalist mandate because there is no state income tax predominantly Mm -hmm. the taxes in florida are raised as tourism taxes on hotels on um, all yeah, sorts so the of state like, doesn't make yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's no tourism, the state has budgetary issues. So there was that capitalist mandate to make sure that tourism didn't die um, in Florida. Um, but other people can, as long as we kept tourism alive, there were, you know, we can lose a few percentage points of uh, residents in Florida. Yeah. I got into my, with my dad the other night about getting a booster. He, he works in a, uh, in planned giving um for a very large nonprofit um that I'm not gonna give any air, air time to. Um and uh he meets with you know donors who are looking at um legacy, legacy building the idea of putting their name on a building or a program or whatever and you know looking at donating a bunch of money. I said, well you have to fucking kill a donor before you're gonna get your booster man. <laughs> uh you know it was an uncomfortable, unpleasant conversation and you know it's dumb but Florida man Florida man. Right. Well, we're reaching the end uh, of our time. I did still, I I'll maybe we can run through it really quickly. Um, I still wanted to do this thing. We we've gotten, I mentioned it on, on uh, Ben Jazz Conf, conf uh, that we have gotten three individual separate, unique copies of the sharper image 2021 gift catalog. <laughs> Oh and, yeah. And looking through that, some things like they just demand conversation. So, uh I wanted to uh for a little bit uh just just take a quick peek at the Sharper Image catalog. So, I'm sharing my screen. Yes. Um and I'm going to start with uh I'm going to start with gifts. I'm going to start with bestsellers because I think that that's generally how uh, the catalogs that we've gotten have started. Um, there's a few things in here that. Wait, is that putting a sandwich? Oh, no, that's, a, that's Santa Claus. <laughs> Sorry. A, there's it, a few things in here that, that definitely jump out at me. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there's, um, yeah, there's whatever that thing is. Uh, just a large Sherpa, I guess. The oversized hoodie. Yeah. yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a Snuggie without the trademark. So so I like, there's a whole bunch of versions of this sort of thing, yeah. um, which is, and it they all, I mean, there's this thing, which actually plugs into your phone, but there's also this, another this thing. This thing, for those of you that are joining us on the audio podcast, is a, a looks like a USB drive that plugs into your phone. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Um, it. Yeah, it's that's that's what I was gonna say. Is like there's a couple iterations of this. They all proclaim themselves to be digital photo storing devices, mm-hmm. and they are literally mm-hmm. 
USB thumb drives. Um, <laughs> That's interestingly of, enough, your phone is are. also a digital, yeah, uh, right, like digital right. file storage device yep. already. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, this is this is probably my favorite thing right here. This is a this is advertised as a password vault, and it yep. looks like. Uh, it looks like the old black, Franklin like black, organizer. Right? Yeah, 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 right, exactly. So if you go into it, um, and I will, um, it'll tell you that it stores up to 400 user IDs, logins, and passwords for your bank account. So it's $70 and it mm -hmm. stores 400 passwords. And this is, this is what you want to give. This is what you give to your cents a password, Chris. That's a pretty good value. Right, right. This is what you give your family members who are insist on writing all their passwords in a little notebook that, and so all the passwords are like handwritten and illegible, and then they scratch them out because they changed their password. Um, and but they're not quite tech savvy enough to to actually spend the freaking twenty dollars a year to store unlimited passwords in one password they're not there yet so we're going to give them this device that gives them 400 i counted and i uh in my one password right now i have over a thousand uh stored passwords yeah. and identities and whatever um mm -hmm. i would need three of these right. things in order right, to right. compare with the thing that's already built into my computer and into my browser let me point out though that that your one password does not fit into a desk drawer, glove box, or purse. That's true. And it is connected to the internet. Uh -huh. So there are two strikes right there as compared to <laughs> Those your are password strikes. vault. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Those are, I think, probably the, the most notable things. I'm just going to scroll through, see if there's anything else that jumps out. There is a couple other tech things are probably in the tech section. Um, all right. We're going to go back to, uh, to the main catalog page all right so then the catalog will often jump to the gifts for her section oh yes yes um there's so, a sandwich printer right yeah the there's <laughs> um i don't know why just the way the lighting works or whatever on the screen it really looks like that printer is it's like a sandwich coming out of it, it maybe it's just the resolution <laughs> um so. so the thing that so it in the in the catalogs the majority of the stuff in here is like personal care uh, mm -hmm. Which I found like you know just like notable like There's you know you have, you have pages of this crap you have yeah. gifts for him and gifts for her and gifts for her is all like personal care stuff, um, but what was really interesting and I haven't gotten to it yet, uh, I'm sure that it'll come up pretty soon. There is 14 pages. Um, there are several. So okay, so this is this is one thing that that is that is notable in the gifts for her section. Um, this is advertised as a heated personal massager. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I know, because some of these things exist in my house, that this is, in fact, a vibrator. Um, but it is a heated personal massager. Right. There are, and, and this was actually in the catalog. And, I'm, and the first thing, and I saw it, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know the Sharper Image sold vibrators. But then I found this, which if anyone has ever seen this device... <laughs> Um, and this is, again, this is what is called sort of, this is what is, would be referred to outside of the sharper image as a wand vibrator. Um, yeah. it's the one with the big head at the end and it's, it's, you know, and, and, and so, but I saw this and anyone, and so it's a picture of a woman who has this, this vibrator and she's putting it on her neck and, yeah. and anyone who, who recognizes this device knows that that is not where you put that, that is, <laughs> that is, you put that elsewhere. Um, so then there's that. And then uh, there's also uh, one of these, uh, also a, a personal massager um, by a company named Lelo. Uh, this is the GG2. And if you do a Google search on Lelo GG, I guarantee it will be 100%. The only results you get are, are stores selling vibrators. So yeah. again, reinforces the idea, oh, the Sharper Image sells vibrators now. They also have the Lelo Elise 2, also a vibrator, <laughs> because that is what this company makes, is yeah. vibrators. Can you go back to the first one? Uh, yes, that was the heated personal massager. I would like to point out, uh, this is very much 
the imagery, if you're mm -hmm. listening to the audio only podcast, this is showing this as being used as a, uh, like massaging sore muscles is the, the imagery that they are using for the product mm -hmm. photos. Mm -hmm. The third bullet point makes a note though, that it is velvety soft with a silicone body. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, the sharper image I think is, is, is really dabbling in a, uh, maybe a, uh, also, it, image here. They're trying to say things without saying things. It also honest, notes that it's eight inches writers. in length, and I don't know that length really matters. It's not bragging if it's true. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if length really matters if you're just using it as a as a personal mm -hmm. massager. I think I think mm -hmm. we can all read between the lines here. Ten massage patterns and intensities, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I didn't notice, what what isn't included. Uh, in in the catalogs, this is new to me. I didn't I hadn't seen this. Is this is a Lelo Sona Sona Two Cruise? Um, you could probably Google that online yourself. Um, this one doesn't doesn't advertise that it's yeah. This one actually says what it is. It's they're not pretending that it's a that's it's a personal massager. They're they're straight up saying this is a vibrator. They didn't actually use the word vibrator, but um, yeah, but they're yeah. they're not. So, so that was, that was a thing that was sort of eye opening. I didn't, I, and, and you, if you go through, um, what category do they list that under? So it's in for her, but it's oh. also, it's also all of them are in the massage, uh, category as well. <laughs> uh, look, man, Sharper image has probably taken a pretty big beating with the uh, closing of malls across America. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I don't know what the margin is on vibrators, but I've got to assume that, that it's this pretty is just high. like a play to keep. Is I, it... I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty high. Well, there's I mean, those it probably are not... depends on on the technology, but I think yeah, those I are think not it... inexpensive ones that they're selling. Either. Yeah, no, they're just not known for their um, uh, like value pricing model. The other thing, uh, and this will be the last thing. Uh, uh -huh. The the last thing that nope. that, that it better not out... be. That, that we're setting right in the middle. <laughs> well, that's where we're going. The okay. last thing, the last thing that I wanted to point out is that there are various incarnations of this this thing, and what this thing is is some sort of a cassette player. Uh -huh. um, and there's this one right here that's a wireless cassette player, which is just like essentially a Walkman, I guess, um, with Bluetooth. Uh, yeah, I'm sure with Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one is a cassette to MP3 converter. And what struck me about, about this device is it's really locking in their target demographic. Uh, their target demographic being probably a dude, uh, probably in, of a particular age, like you'd have to be of a particular age uh, to even recognize what this mechanism is. And then there is, there is, especially with, I mean, this one you can, you can use uh, to, to transfer audio from your cassettes to your computer as well. Um, this one has a, the cassette to MP3 converter has a, a, again, this special storage device, AKA a thumb drive that plugs directly into it um, to, to record, uh, record audio from your cassettes. So, so we'll, we'll backtrack a little bit. Cassettes were the lowest fidelity audio recording. They are the lowest fidelity audio recording or magnetic tape, I will say in general, because this includes eight tracks. It's the lowest fidelity audio recording you can possibly get because the, the, the magnetic tape itself shrinks and expands. It gets, it gets warped. Uh, and then if there's some miscellaneous or random mechanical failure in your uh, playing device it'll get gummed up in the the gears that that like and then it'll get all crinkly and wrinkled and then it just permanently damages uh the audio output so it is not a thing that probably like if you were going to transfer something from analog to digital the cassettes are probably the, the thing that you would want to transfer the least because it is the, the worst possible thing that to transfer um, but so, but this is obviously targeting somebody who has a lot of tapes and people who have a lot of tapes are probably like our age, like dudes in their thirties, forties, fifties. Um, and, and I was thinking mid forties to mid fifties, thirties. Yeah. And, and, and given, and given that, um, given that it's the sharper image, uh, their, their target demographic is probably white dudes with a fair amount of money, especially if they're spending 80 bucks on a wireless cassette player uh, or 70 bucks for a cassette to MP3 converter. Um, Wait, scroll back over the wireless cassette player. I want to point something out. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you'll notice, uh, it has the Bluetooth logo. But in addition to the Bluetooth logo, it has the word Bluetooth because presumably <laughs> the person that is shopping for this is not tech savvy enough to recognize the Bluetooth logo. So they see Bluetooth and they're like, oh, is that what makes it wireless? And they're, yeah, it's uh, it's really something. I kind of want one. I don't know any tapes anymore though. Yeah, I was, I mean, I've, I've, I've had the same thought and that makes me, that makes me recognize that they are definitely targeting a particular demographic here with this particular device. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I am part of that demographic and I do not like it. Well, the, the, the color and finish choices are all part of that too, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Product design. Well, you've made me depressed, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> well, I figured, you know, like it's, uh, it's the holidays and, and when this is when this is going to be aired, it'll be too late to buy any of these things for any of your relatives. So it's probably a you, good thing. Um, you don't but, think that sharper images are going to have personal massagers in stock after the holiday? Well, they will, but it'll be like an after after holiday. It won't be. You think, like, you think they're just drop shipping those, or you think they actually have like a warehouse of vibrators? I think they probably have a warehouse of vibrators. Okay. <laughs> maybe that maybe that'll be the, the name of my next album. Warehouse of vibrators. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll be about old technology uh and with that i think oh, that is yeah. uh that is Hell of a way to close the year out i guess that is binary jazz season three 2021 allison uh, we're so sorry that you had uh internet troubles yeah um, we'll see I you think that we'll see you in the new year yeah i'll be there all right bye Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Binary Jazz.